everyone, and welcome back to Sugar Pills, a practical guide to self-care. As always, I'm your host, Candy Washington, and I cannot wait to help you lead a more joyful life. And before we dive into today's episode with Katie Jeffcoat, be sure to check out the description box down below and also our show notes in case you need some additional support. Be sure to grab our self-love journal. This is your joy self-love companion. Also check out all of our courses down below. We have the Art of Self-Love Masterclass and also a ton of other self-love and lifestyle design classes as well. So check those out. Join our newsletter. It is 100% for free. And when you sign up, you get our free self-love guide. And you can always book some one-on-one time with me if that, you know, is your jam. And also be sure to share this with a friend because your journey to self-love and self-worth is always better with a little bit of support. Also be sure to like, rate, review, and subscribe wherever you're listening or watching. So with that, let's dive into today's episode. So I am honored to be here with Katie. She is the creator of the concept, Intentional Margins, Finding the Harmony Between Your To-Dos and Your Priorities. And I think that's a very timely and very relevant conversation to have, particularly in this day and age. And she's also a master of happiness. She's also um, a master happiness curator. And she has a toolbox filled with happiness science to instantly boost your happiness. So with that, welcome, Katie. Thank you for having me. I am so excited to be here. Every time I see your intro video, I just love it so much. It gives me all the good vibes. So I'm here for it. I love it. And I can't wait for this conversation. Yay. Thank you. Me too. I'm always in the back like, hey. Yeah, me too. It's really fun. It's really fun. So do you want to just tell us a little bit about yourself? And then also, what was your journey to finding your happiness? Oh my gosh. Well, I feel like it's never a straight and narrow path, right? Like it just curves and does all of the twists. So I grew up in a tiny little town of 2006 people in the middle of a cornfield in Minnesota. I knew that is not where I wanted to be, but I didn't know how I would get out. So when I was seven years old, I decided I could either be a doctor or a lawyer. And Mm -hmm. one of those two things was going to make me enough money to Uh, you know, go to college and have a different life of this small town, which I didn't feel very aligned with even as a child. And so I decided to be a lawyer because there was no way that I could be a doctor. I like gag at the sight of blood and I don't really like to touch people. So lawyer it was. And then I was on the straight and narrow path for a very long time. I went through all the schooling, you know, college, law school, got my dream job at a big law firm in Washington, D.C., where I live now and practice law, doing all of the things that I love for a long time and then started to have kids, stopped practicing law, thought I would go back to it or figure out a way. And instead, I went on a journey of Mm self-reflection and realizing that practicing law was a means to an end. Mm -hmm. It wasn't necessarily my passion. So it got me to where I wanted to be and it had fulfilled that purpose. And so I knew that there was something else for me, but I wasn't sure what it was. And I was really having fun raising these kids, which I think is so much fun. So (laughs) I did that for a while and then COVID happened. So we're going like 40 years in like 10 hot seconds. Uh, (laughs) I'll remember the pandemic in March of 2020 when it started and if you or any of your listeners were anything like me, I found myself just doom scrolling social media, watching all of the press releases uh, and like the press conferences on TV and not having any control over what was happening and having a lot of anxiety come up in my, uh, I mean, I'm an anxious type A person anyway, Mm -hmm. but just having a lot of anxiety for the unknown in those early weeks and early months of the global pandemic, when things seem to be changing on a dime and not really having absolutely no control, which I think serves as a lot of anxiety producing um, Mm -hmm. emotions. And then just finding myself feeling like, oh my gosh, the world is a dumpster fire. What the heck <laughs> yeah. are we going to do? Yeah. We have a global pandemic. We have political strife, like in Washington, D.C. It's 
I have a front row seat to a lot of that. Uh, you know, as we continue on, we see global warming and wars and, you know, poverty and all of these things. And I was really feeling like, oh my gosh, the world really is a dumpster fire. Like we're never getting out of this. Right. And I decided that something had to change. Like I couldn't live in that, in right. that depth, in that despair. Yeah. And it wasn't healthy for me. I was drinking a lot of wine because <laughs> that's all there was I felt like to do. We were I was doing Zoom happy hours every single day with my girlfriends. <laughs> And uh, that was just like what we were doing. Yeah. And so uh, what I decided a couple months into the pandemic was that something had to change. And I discovered happiness science by researching how I get myself out of this funk of just not feeling very motivated to really mm -hmm. do very much. And so I dove into happiness science because as a former lawyer, I needed the proof. I couldn't just, you know, wish that there would be happiness. I had to know what did that look like. And so I dove into happiness science, mm -hmm. started my own micro podcast in June of 2020, I think. Um, yeah. 2021, maybe. I can't even remember. It feels like that whole time frame is a blur. I'm sure a lot of other people feel that way too. Uh, <laughs> and then we, uh, you know, now I, I talk about happiness science and talk about the ways to build happiness on your terms in your way. Mm -hmm. which I love. And um, you did mention a little bit in the intro. So years before I created all of this happiness content that I am obsessed with now, I started a concept called intentional margins. And it really is finding the harmony between your to do's and your priorities, because whether you're practicing law or you have kids or you don't have kids or you're an empty nester or you're retired or you're a student going to college, we all know what it feels like to have a to do list that has 752 mm -hmm. things on it. And we only get 750 done and we just, you know, beat ourselves up for the two we didn't do. We've all yeah. been there. We all know what that feels like. And so I created a method to help us walk through how to identify our priorities and then what it looks like to find that intentional, fulfilled happiness, that fulfilled life. I mean, it's all basically the same. Yeah. So, in a nutshell. In a nutshell. Yeah. So what came up for me when you were talking, I think the biggest thing is control and, and giving up the illusion that we can control things and intentionality makes us focus on what we actually can control, which is how we define happiness and how we make ourselves happy. Because like when you're talking about, you know, your story, which I think is a story of a lot of us where it's like, we're going to go to school, we're going to go to go to university, we'll go to law school, medical school, whatever, or we'll get married, we'll have the kids, we'll do X, Y, and Z. Because we think that this sort of predetermined life blueprint, we then have control. You know, I control that this happens at point A, this happens at point B, this happens at point C. So therefore, I will have this happy, picture-perfect life. But then, like you said, when the pandemic hit, it kind of made all of the distractions of the to-do everyday life go away because we all kind of had to stop mm -hmm. and pause and chill. And what and what stillness does, what pausing does, gives you that, that powerful place to, like you said, reflect. Because when we're just on autopilot and we're just, you know, doing A, B, C, and this is what we have to do, there's there's no space for reflection. And if there's no space for reflections, there's no space for choice, right? right. And so I think that I, I love your story because I definitely see myself in that story a lot. And I think a lot of people watching and listening will see it too. And also there's that anxiety of if I don't have control, then I, then I can't control the outcome. And not knowing the outcome makes us scared because we think we're not safe if we can't control the outcome, right? And I think what you're saying, you know, finding out what actually makes you happy, what's that happiness science, what's on your terms and what's on your way, you shift the focus from I'm trying to control things to I'm, I'm going to learn how to control myself. Right. And that's where your power is when you're like, I control myself. You know, I know what I can control within myself. And then therefore, there's nothing to be scared of. There's nothing to fear because I already know from within I have that power of my own choice. And so speaking of choice, how do you 
define what happiness is? Like, how do we choose our own happiness on our own terms? Because it might look like something different for somebody else. Like, I know, like me, like I'm, I've never wanted kids. So if I ever had kids, I'd be like, oh my God, this is horrible. I don't want this. For some people, like that's all they want is kids. And that would be like their happy place or not even things outside of yourself sometimes. Like, you know, for me, happiness is getting out my journal and like putting my little things on it, my little images and doing my Mm -hmm. affirmations. And for some people, that's like that would be the death of me. And they prefer to like go out and do something else. So what are some things that we can do to define what happiness is for ourselves? Yeah, that's really an interesting, um, I love how you frame this because this is exactly what I talk about all the time. So a couple things. One, um, I wrote a blog this year in January of 2023. It's on my website about the happiness soup. And I will share with everyone the ingredients to this recipe because you're right. It's not a one size fits all. And I think when people show up and they're like, this is the method, this is the thing, this is what you do, your morning routine, whatever it is, it's going to give you whatever you want. They're all lying. Mm -hmm. They're all lying because it's not true. Everybody's different. We all have our own DNA. And the fact is we all have our own DNA. Even, uh, we have circumstances. We can pivot different seasons, mm-hmm. right? In one season, this may be the recipe for my soup. And in another season, it's a different recipe, mm-hmm. right? So it doesn't have to be this one size fits all. In fact, it's not. It's just not. Like yeah. science doesn't support that. The anecdotes don't support that. That's just not how, it, not how it is. So happiness, a lot of people think is like how you feel. But happiness is really, most of the scientists will agree that happiness is two prongs. So happiness is part, prong one, how you feel. It's your happiness emotions. Mm -hmm. It's the uh, experience of joy, contentment, positive well-being uh, combined with good, right? It's the, I got a great parking spot. I um, found a penny on the street, right? It's this Mm -hmm. like burst of happiness is this joy. Uh, The second prong is twofold. It's purpose and satisfaction. And this is where all the magic is. This is where you get to have some of that control that we all try to get a little bit of, right? (laughs) So purpose is the joy you feel when you're doing the thing you love. So the joy you feel when you're doing the thing you love, this can be academic research, your work, building a business, being involved in the community, uh, being a parent, being mm-hmm. going to knitting club, like what we were just saying. It can be all of these things. Purpose. What is that for you? Uh, you get yeah. to define what that is. And then satisfaction is really simple. Satisfaction is wanting what you have more than what you want. So wanting what you have more than wanting what you want, like Mm -hmm. wanting the next thing. And like you were saying earlier, some of us think that when we have the kids or get the big house or get the new car, we're Mm -hmm. going to be happier because we're going to have the thing that we want. But the science is very clear. It's undoubtedly not true. That's not how this works. So there's this scientific principle called hedonic adaptation. And it's basically this idea that you always want more. We are Mm -hmm. wired that way. It's in our uh, DNA. It's why uh, as humans, we've evolved the way that we have. There's just no denying it. It's this treadmill of always wanting more. You get the new house, you want to renovate it. Or you get the new car, (laughs) new car smell wears off, right? We always want more. It's never enough on the other side of the coin. You're never happier ever. Like it just, that's just not how it works. You could be happy for a moment. Like it's fun to drive a new car, new car smell wears off, right? Like that's just what happens. Um, so that's what I think is so fun. And so interesting is the way that we, we look at happiness and Mm -hmm. really we've been talking about this forever. The ancient Greeks, uh, would say, you know, if you go back you know, thousands of years, it's happiness is the joy we feel while striving for our potential. The joy we feel yes. while striving for our potential. If yes. you want to narrow it all down. And I think that's really where the, where the fun is and where the magic is. 
Yeah, I think that to me is like such the essence. And it's so funny because that's what I was like writing notes and like that's what came up, like the joy you feel while, say it again because it's so good. The joy you feel while striving for your potential. Love that. Love that. Because I was writing um, appreciation leads to happiness. And that's the root of purpose and satisfaction Mm -hmm. is exactly what you're saying, like the joy you feel. Because I think, you know, really finding the happiness, because like you said, I forgot the the particular term you used, but we are hardwired as human beings to want more, strive more, never enough, more, 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 Mm -hmm. more, more. But I think, you know, um, we talk about spirituality on my channel, but I think that the divinity that lives within us, however you want to define it, not religion, but more spiritual, um, that lives within us gives us that sense of appreciation so that we can be happy on the journey, so that we can have that joy in the fulfillment of our potentiality, right? Uh, I'll tell you like a quick little story that came to mind when you we're talking about this. And I think um, appreciation and joy is what gets out ego. And, the, mm-hmm. and once you let go of the ego, then you can be happy where you are because that's the it's the ego mind that's saying, this isn't good enough. We need to renovate the house. Oh, you need to upgrade your wife. You know, that whole like, oh, we're going to replace her with a younger version. Oh, mm-hmm. you need to upgrade the car. You know, nobody's go- having those cars anymore. Now you need two cars. Oh, you have two houses. Now you need an an island, blah, 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 blah. That's our egoic mind, right? That never lets us sit in appreciation. Um, And I'll tell you a story about that. Like I was, um, I live in LA and I have such a cute like apartment. It's great. It's fun. But I was in my egoic mind and I was like, I really need a house. I should be a homeowner. Why don't I have a house? Blah, 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 blah. Like just like on this, like hamster wheel of suffering that I'd created in my own mind by believing the lie that somehow I should have something else that I just, that I don't have. And so in my building, this family moved in, um, to one of the units next to me and they are this, like this beautiful family. They're a mom, dad, a boy and a girl. Like they're just this people ever. They're just such a sweet family. And I remember seeing the kids swimming in the pool and they were just like laughing and having so much fun and like flipping all over the place. And I just like, I just had to totally, I checked myself, but with compassion, not self-criticism, but I compassionately held myself accountable. And I said, candy girl, get your life together, sweetheart. You are sitting here feeling bad about yourself, thinking you need to own this big home when you have so much to be appreciative for. If there is a a whole family living in the unit next to you and they are full of joy and they are full of happy and they're just, you know, living their life and they're so great. What am I complaining about? You know, it's like I live alone in a gorgeous apartment in one of the most expensive cities in our country. And I have the audacity to complain about something. So I realized that what I was thinking was what my goals are, my ambitions, you know, I want the house, I want this, I'm because I'm ambitious, these are my goals. But because I was lacking appreciation, I was suffering because it was rooted in ego. Mm-hmm. And when you have a goal or when you have ambition that is not rooted in appreciation for what you already have, you will always be suffering. Because that will be your egoic mind always telling you not enough, not enough, not enough, not enough. What's next? You need more. You need better. What's Sally doing? What's John doing? What's Jane doing? Why aren't you doing what Sally, Jane, and Joe are doing? You know? So that was a big lesson for me. And I kind of just re-looked at my entire life in all of the buckets. And I was like, where am I saying I'm being ambitious, but there's still suffering there? You know, oh, you got the podcast, but now you want this. You got this, and now you want that. Where am I not being appreciative for what has already been given to me? Yeah. And I think that was a big shift for me for, to have that like happiness shift, just like you said, being joyful in the fulfillment of your potentiality. Mm-hmm. I think the, the root at that is appreciation and gratitude. <laughs> yeah. 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 And that's so interesting that you say appreciation and gratitude because a lot of times, you know, gratitude can be such a tricky word. Very you know, cliche. Yeah. yeah. And they're like, <laughs> yeah. oh, I'm grateful. 
you know, whatever. <laughs> and uh, I, I sometimes wonder if gratitude and appreciation are basically the same and it's just semantics. Because sometimes you can yeah. get behind this idea that you can appreciate like where you are or mm-hmm. you can be grateful for where you are, what you have. And it doesn't have to be this big thing. And, you know, Mm -hmm. also like people talk about gratitude and if you write in a gratitude journal, you're going to be happier (laughs) and nicer and, you know, unicorns are going to fall out of the sky because you're Mm -hmm. grateful and clearly then you're a better person than all the rest of us who don't do that. Uh, And I think sometimes appreciation is really where it's at. And one of the first uh, ingredients in this like, you know, in creating happiness is to identify gratitude, but it's also to identify appreciation, one and the same. And that can look like a gratitude journal. It can look like saying two affirmations in the mirror as you're brushing your teeth in the morning. Mm -hmm. It can be a gratitude jar. It can be writing a text to someone and saying you appreciate them every single day, like send, pick a new person. There's so many things, you know, that you can do to show appreciation. You can write a thank you card. You can open the door for someone. You can buy somebody a coffee. You can literally do like a million things to show appreciation, Mm -hmm. uh, not only for others and for like externally, but appreciation for yourself. Like, how do you care for yourself? How do you care for your body? Are you, you know, like when you, maybe when you wash your face in the morning, you say, (laughs) I appreciate, you know, eyes that can see or whatever, like Mm -hmm. all the things. Um, but that I think is really where it's at. And I mean, people talk about gratitude as being one of the number one ways to boost happiness. And it's because they try to really what they're saying, if you're really being honest with yourself, they're saying like, what do you appreciate and how do you have more than what you want? That's, that's the science behind it. They just don't, maybe they don't know all of the background or Mm -hmm. that's just the cliche that people have been fed. So they regurgitate it, but. That's yeah. that's where the magic is. No, I agree a hundred percent. Like I did a uh, an episode on this about like toxic positivity. Like I'm mm-hmm. not the one where it's like, hey guys, so today we're gonna write down ten things that we're so grateful for. I'm like, okay, whatever. You know what I mean? Like, yes, a gratitude journal is absolutely great, but we can't miss the intentionality behind it. You know, it's not performative. Like, I'm going to do this gratitude journal so I can post it on my Instagram to show everybody how evolved I am. It's no, are you really in your day to day, in your inner conversation, in your inner dialogue, are you cultivating a, a, a life, a mental lifestyle of showing appreciation and gratitude? You know, not just for what you have, but sometimes for what doesn't happen. Like, I was, I forgot who I was yeah. talking to, but I was doing, I was like hungry or whatever. And I was like, oh, I'm going to make some dumplings. Oh, no, pot stickers. They were pot stickers. Oh. I wasn't paying attention. I was like, la, 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 la. And I had my little like, you know, pan out. And I put some oil in there and then some like little extra water. And I don't think I was supposed to put the extra water in there. And then I turned it on. And it went poof. Like this huge fireball went poof. And if I would have been it like leaning in, this would have been a completely different situation. Like it would have been, it would have been very, very scary, very, very bad. And I just said, thank you, God, you know, for, for protecting me. Like, thank you for your protection. Mm -hmm. And cause sometimes we forget to be appreciative for what didn't happen to you, whether it's something like that, where it's like, oh my God, like, thank you that I didn't get hurt in that moment. Or Mm -hmm. even reflecting back on your life of, you know what, you know, thank you that I didn't get that job. Thank you that that relationship yeah. didn't work out. You know, thank you that I didn't move or, you know, whatever it is. Or thank you that I didn't stay where I was and I did make the choice. Because sometimes we're so focused on what we want to have or what we want to get that we forget to think about, you know, thank you for the things that didn't work out that led me to where I am now. Right. So I think that cultivates that feeling of, or that affirmation or belief that, you know, everything is always working out for me. All that everything always is. for my highest good, you know, and mm-hmm. when you really believe that and you're really rooted in it, you can let go of just like we said of control. Mm-hmm. I don't have to control this situation because I know that re- however this situation comes out, I will be okay on the other end. And that's mm-hmm. how you get the happiness of living present in the moment because you no longer have to control everything or be yeah. anxious about the outcome or depressed about what didn't happen because you know 
everything's always working out for me. And if it's, if it's not working out for me right now, then this is a, the end of it, you know? Yeah. And it's really like looking for the silver lining and really, you know, I think, I think it can be really hard sometimes when you feel like you're in it, like you're in that quicksand to be oh, like, everything yes. is working out for me, <laughs> yes. but you're right. It really is. It really is. Mm-hmm. Um, you just have to kind of figure it out. Yeah. You know, yeah. uh, but I think it's so fun, you know, and, uh, one of the other things is just like random acts of kindness and how fun that is, right? That can help boost your happiness. I'm sure you have tons of ideas about that. Oh yeah. I'll tell you, I'll tell you what, actually this weekend, um, I was walking to, I went to work out and then I was walking to my local grocery store and there was this cute, like, table of what are they called girl scouts so there was the girl scouts or three of them and they were selling cookies with like their dads and their moms and everything so i like walked over to the table and i was like hey girls and i was just like so which one is your favorite flavor like which one do you want the most like whatever and they were pointing to different ones one's like oh thin mints and this one's and that one's and i was like no i was like which one is the one all three of you like the most and so they pointed to like the thin mints and i was like okay i'll get one i was like i'll get some thin mints and then i was like all right you guys share the cookies and like you could tell, like even the parents were like, oh my God, that was so nice. And like the girls were like, really? We get the cookies? And I was like, yeah. And like, you know, I love the the euphoria you get through altruism. Like, I love it. And I, I'm not a person that thinks that altruism just has to be for other people. I think it's, ha- yes, it's for other people, but there's nothing wrong with you feeling really happy and good and purposeful and joyful and doing good for other people. That's also hard, hardwired in us as human beings. That's how we survive. That's how we create community. That's why you're so attached to your family. That's how you have like neighborhoods who work together as a society. If you didn't get that high from helping somebody else out, we would be extinct because we, we're communal human beings, you know? But I just got this like such euphoric, like joy, happiness, like the little girl faces. They're like, really? We get the cookies? And like the like, parents were like blown away by this. And I was like, whoa, like I didn't even think it was that big of a deal. But I also could feel their happiness. It was almost like happiness was contagious, right? So like when they were so excited and then I got even more excited and I had a pep in my step all day long and I kept thinking about the girls and eating the cookies and I was so excited. And it was just a really fun moment of, and it was like six bucks, you know, something like not even anything, you know, but it was just the act of, you know, A, engaging with the girls and talking to them and then giving something to them and for them to like share the cookies together. And I also think it, it also taught the parents something too. I could see in the parents how they were also affected by, you know, the random act of kindness. So I was also looking homeless chic. So they may have also thought I was like a homeless person, which is fine, like no shade to homeless people, but like I had my little Mary Kate Olsen look going on. So they were probably a little scared too. (laughs) But at the same time, it was really, it was really fun. Oh, I love that so much. And you're right. Kindness is contagious. There is a ripple effect. And when you can just create that ripple, it, it expands. There's just, there's no question about it. The science is very, very clear on how contagious uh, kindness is and how Mm -hmm. you don't go home and like kick your dog, right? Because you're like, somebody was nice to you. You do something nice for someone else. And that's what I think is so incredible about how all of this work is like, whether it's happiness or kindness, it's all about being intentional and how it makes you feel. So whether it's giving $6 box of cookies or $5 to a charity that you love, it doesn't have to be this big, huge thing. It's Mm -hmm. about the intention behind it. Just like you were saying about gratitude, it's the intention. It's how are, how are, how are you intentional? Mm -hmm. Because the thing is, if you are just doing it for the sake of doing it, it doesn't work. Like that's, that's not how this shakes out. Right. Yep. Yep. So yeah. I love it. Yeah. And you're right. Like it, it, it is the intention because any act in and of itself is an oculus. What, the only thing that gives action meaning is the, our energy and our intentionality behind it. You know, even look at our, our legal system. You know, there's a difference in tiers of intentional homicide, not it, like man, whatever it is, because intent matters. You know, what yeah. the intention of the person was is meaningful. You know, I always talk about Oprah because I love her, but she always talks about intentionality. 
you know, wh when you do something, what is the purpose? What is the reason? What's the why behind it? And one thing that is completely free, that completely is c kindness contagious and always surprises people is holding the door open for someone. You would be surprised how surprised people are when you take the five seconds to hold a door open for them. I was you just going to say that. They like, you feel bored. so good. They feel, feel so good. good. They feel good. And the funny, sometimes they're suspicious. They're like, why are you holding a door for me? Because you always, you can tell when people are not used to kindness, when they are suspicious of it. Yeah. And you know, they're like, wait, are you trying to steal from me? Like, what's happening? Why? Like, you know, they kind of check their purse, their pocket. And it's like, no, 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 I'm just holding the door. Like, you're fine. And then once they realize that they're safe and someone is just doing a, a kind act for them, they get lighter and they smile and you can and you can tell that they kind of feel because the funny part is when you're kind to someone, you're boosting not only your self-esteem, but you're also boosting their self-esteem. Mm -hmm. Because when you receive an act of kindness, it makes you feel good. It makes you feel worthy. It makes you feel seen and validated, right? Mm -hmm. So you're boosting both people's self-worth and self-esteem just by being kind to them. And this is gonna sound really funny, but um one thing I've been working on personally is, and I don't mean this in like a woo-woo way, but being more in like my divine feminine energy, which is just being more open to like receive and softer. And because I'm in my masculine a lot, I'm like writing and I'm speaking from authority and I'm doing and I'm hosting things and doing that. So I'm in my masculine authoritative, knowledgeable self a lot. And I was like, I want to be more in my softer. I want to be more in my feminine. I want to be in more of my receiving mode and be open and all of that. Um, and I was at a coffee shop and I had like a little tickle in my throat because I'd been sick for a bit. And I was like coughing, coughing. And I was like, no, no, I'm okay. And then this guy came over and he was like, hey, like, do you want me to buy you like some kombucha? I was like a ginger kombucha. And my gut reaction was like, no, 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 I'm fine. You don't have to. But then I was like, wait a minute you're cultivating a, a, a more openness, a more receptive, a more open and ready to receive, a softer being. Why would you not allow someone to do something kind to you? Why would you not receive somebody's kindness? And so I was like, oh, you know what? Actually, that would be really nice. Thank you so much. Yeah. And so he like bought me the kombucha and it was so nice. And I was just, it was my own mindfulness of what are my, def am I default shut down like no you can't do that for me because i'm in masculine give 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 mode and to be fearful of receiving or am i actually going to practice put into practice what i've been thinking about and working on because that's really the work is you understand a concept but when you actually put that concept into practice in a pra in a real life way, yeah, that's really where the work is. And I just felt so much lighter and so much more open and just so much more, you know, in my divine feminine energy, you know, because being like feminine masculine isn't like, oh, you look girly or you look like a man. It's right. energetic. It's all yeah. energetic, you know? Mm -hmm. And so yeah, that to me was like a big thing. And you, and you, it sounds really small, but it was really huge for me. It was really big being in a place to receive. Well, yeah. And you like told the universe basically like, this is what I'm working on. This is what mm -hmm. I want. And then it showed up and you were like, okay, yep. I'm going to, you know, I see this. Yeah. You know, this is what I've asked for. Yeah. So I'm going to pass the test because if I show appreciation in this moment, if I do something differently than what I would usually do, then that's just going to open up the space energetically to receive more. So, whatever, you know, so whatever other area in my life where I'm asking for more, whether it's from the apartment to the house, you know, from dating to married, from, you know, working for someone to being an entrepreneur or being an entrepreneur to working for someone, depending on whatever the jam is, it, it opens it up more. Once you kind of pass that test there, then you're kind of saying, you know what? I really am open and ready to receive. Yep. Yep. Into absolutely. The flow, into the flow. Yep. Yep. I love it. You're absolutely right. And that's what I think a lot of times, you know, we forget, you know, we think that it's just a prescribed way to get from point A to point B, but it really is just a path and you get to, you know, create your own recipe that sets you up for success. A hundred percent. And when you and when you think about the stories of the people that you admire, you know, 
whether they're like experts in a space or quote celebrities or just people who are like in like public figure area, when you really listen to their stories, usually they get to where they are in the most random ways. You know, it's usually not even in that cookie cutter A, B, C, D way. It's usually like, yeah, I was grinding and working and then something shifted and then boom, this happened, you know? Yep. So um, one thing I always say to myself if I like have a goal or want to do something or anything like that is, A, I say, let it be clear and let it be easy. Like I actually just bought a, a new car and I had to figure out which one I wanted to get. And so I just said, let, let my decision be clear and let it be easy. Let my decision be clear and let it be easy. And if it didn't feel clear and if it wasn't easy, then it was a no. Mm -hmm. like, um, and so I always say, let it be clear, let it be easy. And what was the other thing I usually say? Do, 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 do. Let it be clear, let it be easy. And I forgot the other one. It'll come to me. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I it. think. I think you're right. And that's what's so exciting about, you know, just doing this inner work and why mm -hmm. your podcast is so important and you. how, you know, inspiring it is to, you know, have conversations, mm -hmm. right? Because you just never know, like, when the next thing will come and whatever that looks like, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, you could be like, I'm open. And then something totally random will fall into your lap, which oftentimes yeah. is what happens to me. It's never what I think. It's like, this is my business plan or this is my one year plan. And it never works that way because something always comes up. But it's usually for the better. Right. And, you know, the universe always, always has your back. Oh, yeah. That's what I say. I remember now um, once you, were, you started talking, I also say I'm open to your magic and miracles. Mm, because I love that. I know what I want. And I'm like, this is what I want. And this is how I'm going to do it. But then I'm like, but wait a minute. I have so much support around me. You know, like whatever your belief systems are, you know, whether you want to call it the universe or, you know, God, divinity, whatever you want to call it, whatever you connect with. It's there. Unconditional love, you know, consciousness, you know, unconditional love, consciousness. It is there to support me. You know what I mean? Like it's there to support me. So why do I think I have to do everything in my own will, in my own, in my own, you know, with my own ness? When I have a complete universe, a complete unloving, unconditional love, consciousness, divinity, that literally just wants me to be happy. Yep, it really does. You know, the universe does have your back. So I always say, you know, this is what I want, but I'm open for you to surprise and delight me. I'm open for this to be easy and clear. I'm open for your magic and your miracles, you know? And it's so funny, like I said that, cause I was looking for a new um, manager and I'd been like pitching some people and, you know, again, in my masculine, I'm pitching people, I'm being proactive. And I just said, you know what? Let this be easy. Let this be clear. I want, I want, my, I want the right manager for me to come to me. I'm open to magic and miracles. I want them to come to me. Like, I want them to be like, you're the person I want. <laughs> so I stopped pitching and I was pitching for something completely different, something completely different. And based on that pitch, they reached out and said, hey, are you looking for a new manager? Because I saw your stuff and we would love to work with you. And so I signed with them. I have a new manager. She's fantastic. I love her. But it was so funny because when I started, stopped actively trying to make it happen and I just released and let it go yeah. and I just that it was going to come to me it came yep you know because it's like why do I think I have to do everything by my own will when there's literally this whole divinity that is waiting for me just to ask for help yep that's the that's the most fundamental prayer you can ever say is help and thank you yeah. Yep. Absolutely. Oh, it's so beautiful. I love so that. Good. So, so good. good. Oh, Katie, this has been so much fun. I know my cup is full and running over. I hope yours is too. So do you have any parting words for us? Any words of wisdom on how to find your happiness or anything else that you offer? And then after that, I want you to share where we can find you and connect with you, but I'll have everything linked down in the description box and the show notes. Okay. 
Um, I think a closing, I would just say that it's our responsibility to find happiness wherever mm -hmm. we can. And that does not decrease our compassion for what's happening in the world around us. Yeah. So the world can still be a dumpster fire and we still have a responsibility to find our happiness. And I think that's really, um, really fun and kind of empowering to leave Leave, leave with uh you can find me at my website it's very simple it's my name katiejeffcoat.com i have a blog that i'm obsessed with and i have an email that i send out about twice a month so not that often but it's all about happiness it's all about kindness and practical tips and just really fun stuff uh that i'm really excited about i have a micro podcast called everyday happiness it's about two minutes a day it's every single day and that's also really fun you can find it everywhere you listen to podcasts or on amazon alexa but really it's um the good stuff is all in my email that's really where i like link to the best of where i'm talking about what's happening in real life and um that's that's what we've gotten it's all on my website Oh, I love that. Thank you so much, Katie. You definitely filled my happiness tank today. <laughs> and so for everybody watching, if you want to connect with her, everything will be linked down below in the show notes and the description box. And also don't forget, if you need some extra support, you can definitely grab our self-love journal and check out our courses down below and join our newsletter. Like I said earlier, it is free and you also get a free self-love guide and check out everything else down below and book some one-on-one -on -one time with me if you want. So Katie, thank you so much. And for everybody watching, be sure to share, like, rate, review, and subscribe. And as always, take care of yourself and each other. Bye.